Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I've got a real treat for you. You've probably seen his mug around the internet. He's always the dude with the messy hair dropping straight facts, seemingly. You're very convinced when you do those. Old frickin' Taylor Welch is in the house. What's up, man? What's up? Dude, you should see you should see the comments we get on those ads from uh people who think you can't make money if you look like i do shit like, uh, that's that's what makes people stop like who's the dude with the wild hair what's he they, what's like, he saying he can do it i can do it exactly yeah, be- because dude tell me if this is a fact or not people are scrolling usually with no volume and and your headline your text and or your hair is what makes them say hey i want to see what this dude's saying or lately your mask or lack saying. thereof I did an ad yesterday with a mask on, and I mumbled the whole time, so people purposely couldn't hear me. And it'll probably be our best ad of all time. That's funny. So we'll see. Fo- so, folks, Bomb Squad, pay attention. Old thirty-one years old. He's already got three global brands. Author of two best-selling books. He speaks all over. Entrepreneur of his own self, and creator of the number one rated sales training program, the Sales Mentor. You do sales training. A little bit who do you who, yep. do you who do you teach a couple thousand a month come in but we go we go after people who have never done sales before oh. ever that's, so that's pretty good big market it's a bigger market than going after sales professionals who already think they know have everything. learned from yeah you and you know gc i don't want yeah. to compete with you guys dude so i just go have, if you're working at sonic and you want to make more money come on over and what about, uh, what, about to do what about sonic automotive can you teach car salesmen how to sell hey, more cars that works too man how, what that are your too. what are your steps what's your secrets for sales yeah how much time do we have on the show as many as much as we'd like i'm the boss i uh here's the Listen thing up. i did not <laughs> i didn't want i didn't think i was designed to be a sales trainer but uh i got pretty good at it i actually come from the church world i was a a pastor. Amen. That's right. Who's your I Lord? Who's it, your Lord and Savior, Taylor? So I decided at one point that uh, <laughs> I liked being able to make money. He blows. So got, right, he blows right past that question. It's like it's like the debates. We got to. I'm in like politician mood. If I don't like the question, I just am not going to answer it. That's a good. That's a great question. Hey, but great still, question. the reason why I do is because I do this show for the Bomb Squad. What we're trying to do here, if you've never listened to the show, is we bring the yeah. knowledge from the people who have it. You to the people who need it them me everybody everybody needs it and everybody wants it right or they should Mm -hmm. and then a lot of people have it especially in little niche or niche markets your your books are on what topic or yeah yeah. we had a new one that's dropping today it's called common sense consulting Uh, so that's on putting together yeah all of our books actually have a uh, have a backing in finance um so the intelligent advertiser comes you know the intelligent investor Mm. we just change one name or one letter or word so common sense consulting is just about how to put your programs together so Um, intelligent advertiser is about advertising obviously so so So, if i were to read those books i I, you teach me how to advertise and how to invest uh, do you would make like a million dollars in an hour or two who would you would if you read it guaranteed money back well then how do i just hire the source uh inside of tf is that what you're saying yeah like how do i hire you direct uh if i'll make a million dollars reading your book how much would i make working with you more than that all right well then (laughs) what's what's that worth you want to split up millions or no common common sense consulting is uh is how you get started and how you scale People still work with our team. You just go. You you want to, you want me to tell you how to get started with that? Is that what you're wanting? Well, no. I was wondering, like, number one, what are the tips that you're teaching in these courses? If I bought your sales mentor training, what are you teaching me? 
how to sell. What's, how the, to, what's the first step in sales? How to be convincing, how to be influential, yeah, how what, to be a leader. I like all those topics. What's the first step in any of those? It depends on what you're, who you're selling to. That's true. Give me a market. Give me a market because I'm not selling I'm a, fish. I'm, I'm going to give you a bomb. I'm going to give you a bomb. You know why? Because that's true. It does, it does matter. And the reason I know, dude, is because obviously, as you know, I'm a sales fucking training expert. Expert, yeah. mind you. Although, yeah. you know, young whippersnappers like you coming up, dude, the, the, people can learn from all of us, don't you think? 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. So if anyone, like when you said, you know, I don't know if you want me to bring up the sales training and, you know, that's being respectful because obviously this is my audience, but I don't monetize my audience like normal people. You know, if they want to buy something from someone I talk to or, 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 or that's good. If they want to freaking, you know, however they need to get help. If the help is buying my course and your course, then they should do that. Because I can promise yeah. you, you're probably teaching some shit I'm already teaching, but you're also teaching a lot of shit that I didn't even mention and vice versa. I bet you if you go through my training, you'll be like, yeah, I, I, I talk about that. Well, yeah, because dude, there's some, there's some fundamentals when it comes to sales training. Yeah. Most, but, most of my time right now goes into real estate. So are you, so, are you a real estate investor? Yes, sir. All right. And, yeah. I, and I heard the uncle G comment that, you, that you're not selling fish. You're referring to the Jordan <laughs> Belfort, uncle G debate. Uh, the greatest interview of all time, man. Yeah, that was a good one. It's so, there for comedic relief. That was a good one. You know, I'll tell you, old G, old Grant Cardone, you, you've seen him around. Do you, you know him at all or no? Not personally, no. As you know, I do. So, yeah. so it's funny because one time, one time I said, dude, I got to unfollow you. You're freaking bombard me with your freaking ads and your shit. And he said, yeah, but people that unfollow you aren't buying it. And I'm, and it dawned on me that, you know what, that's a, that's a good idea. Now you probably get some hate also, don't you? Yeah. A fair amount. How do you handle the hate? Cause you know what? I, people are afraid to be like you see yeah. you're confident on the, on the Facebook or wherever people see you. Cause again, I, w when someone said Taylor Welch, I'm thinking, okay, uh, who's this dude? And I don't even know why, because I don't agree to do these freaking things when our studios are open, because I'd rather do it live. So we agreed to do it with you. I'm thinking, Taylor Welch, Taylor Welch, is that like freaking Jack Welch's kid? Like, who, who is this dude? And then when I saw you on the screen, I'm like, oh, you okay, knew. I know this dude. Now, but, but see, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with it. Bomb yeah. Squad, pay attention. That's what, 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 what's called familiarity. Now you you totally take advantage of familiarity, don't you? Hundred percent. It's easy. I think it's easy to handle. Uh, you 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 can tell me if you disagree, but it's easy to, for me to handle hate because I'm rich and it's clear that I'm successful and I don't really give a shit about what people think about me. But it was hard at the beginning. It was hard at the beginning. So well, you got to you got to learn that if you can't get somebody emotionally moved then they're probably not going to buy from you or talk about you. You look at Donald Trump right now. Do you see his interview with Chris Wallace? No. All right. Well, let me just give you the, the footnotes. It was a horrible interview. I don't think that Donald did a good job at all. Uh, but guess who's talking about Donald Trump and Chris Wallace right now? Everybody. Everybody. The entire world. That's how he owns the media. He doesn't care. It's They said, Chris Wallace said, are you going to own the the results of the election? He says, we'll see. I'll let you know on the day of. People are all up in arms. There is truth to that. Even negative press is good. Is press that's going to help you out? You know. Well, you would know some. You know something about that. Yeah, I do. But you know, I don't even pay attention to it, and I don't for some reason get much of it. Maybe because I'm not paying attention to it. To the press. Yeah, like to the comments, to the hate. Like you like, got a team, don't you? Yeah. It but, doesn't but, freeze, but, so not, do but not for social media. You don't? You do all of it yourself? No, no, no. They post and everything. But like if I comment on my social media or I answer you in a DM, it's definitely me. Nobody goes through my DMs and answers people and, and, and post shit on comments. Nobody comments. Did it bother you at the beginning? No, because <clears throat> fortunately, I was already older by then. I was already learned. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the lesson here, folks, is simple. 
you don't need to concern yourself with other people's opinion, right? Because if you're so afraid of the hate that you don't say what you offer, say what you believe, you know, get known and recognized like this dude, then, then, then you're not going to sell shit anyway. That's part of it. Now you teach that I'm sure, right? Yeah, we teach it in in the from the frame of second and third order consequences. How much so, money how much money you spend in a week in social media advertising? Two hundred, hundred and fifty. Hundred and fifty G's. Somewhere around there. Now see yeah. folks, people are like, Holy shit, dude, a week? And then you don't realize that out of that one fifty, how much you getting back? Six hundred. Yeah, now what if you were getting Seven. what if you were getting only one fifty? You were spending one fifty and you were getting one fifty. Should you still do it? Yeah, I think it depends on the model, but if you have something else to sell them, absolutely. Make your money back selling something else. Folks, anytime you can get a return on your money digitally, you 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 scale it as high as it'll go. And the reason why is because you'll start to get no known, liked and trusted, recognized, and as soon as you're recognized as he just pointed out, you pull out a different product and boom, you go right back to those same people. And dude, you're starting to make big, big bank. Anytime you can spend a couple hundred thousand a week advertising on Facebook, even if you're breaking even, you need to, you want to keep going with it just simply to get branding, just simply to get known and familiar. Right. And, and you buy the list, you're getting a free list of customers. You can sell fish to them. You can sell insurance to them. You do anything you want with those people. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So how'd you get started? Uh, my wife wanted me to help her get new clients. This is 2014. Um, so I picked up a book and learned about copywriting. Summer of 2014. Got into it. Funny you say that. Good. Pay attention, Bomb Squad. I keep telling people, it's not just placing the ads and knowing how to retarget and pixels and all that shit. You better know, learn how to write copy. The copy is what matters, if you ask me. Yep. I got to get I gotta get one of those rigs on my desk. Yes, sir. To drop my own bombs. Um, That's right. We sent out letters. She got clients. I started servicing business clientele writing copy for them i had i wrote sales letters old school have one of these notebooks these yellow legal pad notebooks and i filled 15 of them copying out ads by hand got really good met chris evans my business partner and we started teaching people how to do it because it's more economically advantageous to teach marketing if you're going to be in the business of marketing um Started taking equity partners, built sales mentor, built wealth cap, which is a real estate company. But this is why I don't have the answers. I don't have the one, two, three step punch that you're looking for is because I'm not as involved in my businesses as most people are because I, I, I have a team. I've learned how to leverage people. So there you go. That's another secret, folks. I'm up, I'm up over $20,000 an hour because of my team which means that I don't have to put the time in that I once did. So I think it, the business is first a process of getting the attention, learning how to sell, which is what you teach how to do very well. And then removal of the owner from the day to day. Elon Musk isn't, he's not on the line anymore. He was at one point, but he's not on the line anymore. Where are you right now? City wise? City and locale. Like what's behind you? It looks like freaking the goddamn smoky mountains you like that you like that don't you what is it smoky mountains where are you at nashville this is franklin franklin tennessee is oh, the suburb of nashville franklin yeah if i move there where Come should on. i move williamson county anywhere in williamson county doesn't matter where see if you want some land you can get some land we just got a five acre spot right down the road this is our offices though we've got a kind of a warehouse looking office dude so so on the other side how old were you when when, when you started doing this 25 and what kind of, where were you financially? Negative $25,000 net worth, $25,000, $30,000 a year salary. Working for who? At a real estate company. Doing what? Uh, property management. It's the worst part of real estate. 
and that's what I got. So to you do. were renting out apartments, single family homes. Oh, so yeah. you were, you were running the landscapers and the maintenance people, maintenance people, signing leases, dealing with angry tenants, all that good stuff. You weren't collecting rent, were you? Uh, I was, but I wasn't collecting late payments. I was just collecting the rents. Why wouldn't you just hand that off to him? Oh, you, oh yeah, you worked there. I was about to say, I thought you were owning them. So now you own them. No. Yeah, now I own them. Yeah, now yeah. you own them. So, so are you getting money off uh, investors like Cardone? Uh, we did for about three months, but we make enough money that I'd rather pay myself that that return dividend than pay someone else. We don't do it the same as he does, though. He does, you know, he's doing more syndication, and we're doing debt only fund. We are SEC uh, regulated, but debt only, so you don't get ownership in our fund, but it's twelve percent annual return. Damn, guaranteed. Yep. Dang. So you're just raising money. I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to say that, but um, <laughs> so it's just, connected to. So you're just raising money then. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we closed it. We closed it in January of this year, and everything else, everything we've put in, has been our own money. So this Daily Mind Medicine and this Traffic and Funnels, they're both podcasts. Traffic and Funnels is a consultancy, so. We sell products and, and high ticket clients probably have a hundred thousand ish, eighty to a hundred thousand customers a year come hmm. through, buy our stuff and 5,000 ish are high ticket. So we worked with them for a period of time to build their stuff out. So you, That's traffic and funnels. You show you, your consultancy firm to show people how to build high ticket items, high ticket packages. Really how programs. to a little bit of that, but the main focus is showing them how to build their advertising and acquisitions for their own clientele. Can you do it for any product? Does it have to be a knowledge-based product or any product? The only limits really that we put on it is making sure that it's not a, uh, the business owner can control the products. Yeah, yeah. So if it's, a, if it's an MLM or something, you probably get value from it, but you can't control the product and it'll take you nine years to earn that investment back, so. So what's Daily Mind Medicine? It's just a podcast that we launched in March. You People were asking for it. What's the topic? Marketing? So it's short stories. It's like three, four, five minutes. And it's just daily uh, lessons or frameworks for how to think better. Mm. How, to handle, how to handle obstacles, resistance. Um, I tell people... I've looked into nootropics and I've got stuff, supplement stacks just like probably you do. But one of the best nootropics that I've ever discovered is a guy named Jim Rohn. Old school. You put it on in the morning and you eat. It's like eating your, your vegetables. It's good mental models. How to think about the world. So I'm like, I'm going to create that. It's modern because even know, though, even though he's Jim dead. Rohn is great. But huh? Even though he's dead. Even though, yeah, but this is lifelong this applicable is, lessons. Absolutely, yeah. It's funny you call it nootropics. That's right. You know, a famous individual who I would consider the granddaddy of all the, the you know, gurus, Tony Robbins, learned from Jim Rohn. Yeah, that was his dude. So, so what book or audio version would you recommend first? Someone go get. Of Jim Rohn? Yeah. Audible has uh, the ultimate Jim Rohn library. And it's got a collection of his different trainings and events that you can go through. It's a little bit, though, it's a little bit like learning from old school copywriters. You got to water it. You got to water it and mix it a little bit with what's new because life has changed. And uh, I think the level of, of play has changed. Even you look at a guy like Tony, and he has built, built upon and changed and tweaked so daily mind medicine is mostly about yeah, you know, how do you how do you learn from somebody whose main living doesn't come from teaching mindset, but yet they have to have the mindset. How do you how do you learn sales from someone whose main income doesn't necessarily come from teaching sales? But it comes from application, right? right people there. people are all learning right now from uh, from the teachers, but what about the masons in the fields who are actually putting up the tents and building that's who we need to learn from mm. right well if you're wise if you're wise yeah exactly you only would do that if you're wise if you're dumb you're just going to go out and learn on your own 
Yeah. And by the way, it's very expensive just to find out who not to use as a digital agency on the internet. Yeah, we call it tuition. Because people sometimes come to us and they're like, man, I wasted all of this money. But you got to learn how to think about it the right way. Because really what you did is you paid a tuition. People want to go to Harvard and waste their money getting a degree on something that's probably not going to help them. And they think it's worth it. Uh, but you invest into the wrong mentor. That's actually tuition to learn how to find the right mentor. That's a more empowering mindset, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So so if I said, okay, I want this sales training, I want the sales mentor, what would I do? Where would I go? You say I show up? Yeah, you go to a website and you'd see my face and you would just give us your money. And then you log in? You log in and you go through your training and then we'll probably staff you actually if you want what's, it. What's remember, we're what, serving, what's, we're, what's we're serving people who, huh? What system are you using to deliver those videos? So you're not going to like it. Which one? Kajabi. Well, that's okay. Kajabi is good for what it is. I mean, that's like saying, what's the difference between a swimming pool and a water park? Kajabi's a swimming pool, bro. I'm just, I, I, I'm not even, <laughs> Move us over. I, I'm not even wondering why you're not using the water park yet, but we'll get to that offline. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there you but, go. but, yeah. but I'm just curious cause I'm trying to envision what I'm going to see when I log in. Okay. So I just see a bank of videos. And the reason, and the reason why, you, again, you're going to want to consider interactive videos because if you're driving thousands of people through a video, you're not asking any questions, you're not making any offers at the right time, you're losing opportunity. Would you agree or disagree? A thousand percent. Yeah, and, agree. and you can't do that with Kajabi. You can get a hand Kajabi or a blow Kajabi, but you're not going to get a training system. Now, do you know why we started Sales Mentor? Why? Because people need it. I was tired it. of people need it, but it wasn't that, uh, you know, I'm not Mother Teresa. It was a little bit more selfish than that. I was tired of having to go find salespeople and then they were dumb. I had to un they had to unlearn everything that they learned from the university. The fish salesman. And, the fish salesman. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'd be like, no, nah, you can't just beat the shit out of someone and because not, you, not you have anymore. Brands. Not anymore. That used to work plenty well. And by the way, it's, it still does. But here's what I tell people. Just because you hammer somebody and close a deal once in a while doesn't mean you didn't lose six deals you could have got not hammering people. Yeah. With finesse. Yeah. You, There's you, a thing you, called finesse. Uh, yeah. Charm, finesse, humor. Build Emotional a, intelligence. Build the relationship first. Worry about selling them something else second. Yep. See, like, I'm not, see I'm not worried about selling you lights. But dude, I already know it's a done deal. All you have to do is see it. Because you're so intelligent, you'll see that you've lost millions of dollars using Kajabi. So now add what you paid for Kajabi and add millions that it cost you by using it. And now you know yeah. that my fee would have been less than that. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's, called, that's called preconditioning and it still works. Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, we'll talk about that later, but I'm just visually, okay, so I get a password, I log in, I watch the videos, then what? You drip me what? Uh, I think we actually release everything at once. I don't think we do drips. No, no, no. At what, the you, you email me during this time, don't you? Yeah, but you know, you don't get dripped out at like one week, then you complete that, then two weeks, three weeks, four you, weeks. You don't. You don't. Cetera. You don't have any way to hold them accountable to the training. Uh, they, it's not. People pay like a couple hundred bucks if if they need an accountability partner for a couple, a couple hundred bucks. I don't want to hire them. So. <laughs> Uh, see folks, what, let me translate what, the, what he just said to y'all. He said, if, if, you know, you need help for 200 bucks, he ain't helping you like watch the damn videos. Exactly. Shut the fuck up. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or reduce your goals down to what well, you're willing now to now do. Now watch, to now watch if you would embed into that, you know, a couple hundred dollar course and an interactive offer to get live coaching, you would, you would have gotten people at 5,000 for consulting or whatever you just didn't ask do you know why yeah no we do when we do you do. not in the video you don't but not in the video we uh but we have a team so we use what we you call them we train people to do yeah we call every single person who buys See, that's a lot of labor son you're talking about being cutting edge and you're doing it the old fashioned way hey dude you know i could listen we do? i could interact you know we listen i could interact direct with, mail i know but listen oh and that works but I could interact. I could, so does people. I could. Well, you're correct. People do work, but they got better things to do than fucking ask people if they're interested in a product. You know, an interactive video can do that.
and then the people call the people that fucking click yes and then and then once they're done with all the yeses call all the nos because one of the first things i teach in sales dude is fucking fish in the right pond find the right target you don't want to find people that don't want your shit okay and then and then and then try to sell them shit that they don't want you want to find people who do want your shit so if you put eighty thousand people for example through a video and you interactively said would you be interested if i offered some sort of high level high ticket coaching call and they click yes and a bunch of people click no you want your salesman calling the no's or the yeses i want to call them both no you call the yeses until you don't have any more yeses to call you don't waste your time with the fucking no's you waste the time with the no's when you're out of yeses, okay? <laughs> you see the difference? You got so many people gonna, saying yes, and you, don't, you don't call a no and beg them to buy your shit. I know you, dude. You don't do that. I can already tell you do the takeaway, nine, 90%. Your pitch is takeaway, isn't it? Like you mean? Act like you saying, don't. I don't know if you qualify for this. <laughs> yeah, act like you don't give a rat's dick whether they buy no, or not. No, not for a sales mentor. Not for sales mentors. So sales mentors, just a course. How old are you? 51. If you had my net worth when you were 31. I didn't. I was fucking broke. You would, you would likely have a different model because here's where I think you're, 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 you have a certain level of wisdom that comes from experience. Yep. So you've done it all the wrong way and you've learned how to do it the right way. <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't had the chance to do it the wrong way. But here's what I will tell you is that the old school is actually coming back, dude. The old school is coming back. Direct mail is coming back. Manually calling people and texting people with the aid of software. You know, we use uh, HostBot and Salesforce. So we, we have some intelligence, but if you want to build me an interactive video, I will 100% take that. But what I'll do is we'll use that to organize and prioritize a prospect list. But I'm still calling those notes. Oh, sure. You'll just, keep, you'll, just, you'll just keep scaling because it doesn't matter yes or no. You got a lead in front of you, don't you? Absolutely. You're, some you're, of them are going to say no. Some of them are going to say no because they don't have the intelligence to say yes yet. Yeah, no one sold So them. I'll give them some more content and bring them back around. Not me personally, but you know the team. Yeah, yeah. But again, you also agree with what I'm where, saying. If you had, where a bunch of yes, if you had so stuff? many yeses, you couldn't call them all. You wouldn't be saying, hey, grab the no stack. You'd no, be, you'd I, be, would, be, I would out hire them. Because because of my background in real estate. Where did I get this? Where Und, did it come understood. From? But if you only had a certain amount of people and you had so many yeses, you wouldn't call the no's. Dude, just admit it. It's correct. <laughs> I would probably hire more people to call the no's. Yes, but but let's pretend since we're pretending. You sound, you guys sound like the deep state right now. That's what you sound Dude, like. let, let's talk about the yes. deep state. Are you scared? You might get snuffed. You might get suicided. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the deep state, man. You hear so much about it. My question is, is... You know, I always ask people, I asked this uh, guy the other day, I said, how awake are you? And, and he's like, what do you mean? Because like, how awake are people, dude? Do they even know what a deep state is? I think it depends on whether they watch CNN or whether they find their own information. Well, I mean, you, you surf social media, look at any news channel, deep state's been said a million times from a million people. I think, I think people have dissonance and they don't want to, they don't want to accept that, um, COVID is not the disease, you know, trafficking is a disease. Dude, no, they don't want to look, hey. they don't want to look at that. Hey, I know, but listen, if, if that trafficking shit is like real and people, are, Oh, it is real. I know there's trafficking, but is fucking the Clinton family and Obama and all these movie stars is Will Smith and Oprah Winfrey eating child parts, Tom Hanks. you know, like, like, come on, dude, Tom Hanks is part of an evil ring that slits open babies. Like, dude, if, Hey, I'm not doubting anything. Cause anything's possible. But come on, dude, that's where it goes a little far fetched. That's where the cognitive dissonance turns into freaking common sense. Like, come on. Now, I wish it's all true because if the deep state and all that's true, it means that Trump and the white hat Q people are coming to the rescue. <laughs> and everybody's gonna have you know, a, everyone's gonna have a tax free Twitter. society and we're gonna drain the swamp and there ain't gonna be nobody. And you're all gonna be shocked when you hear who got arrested and blah, blah, blah. Well, Twitter's. It looks like Twitter is kind of cracking down on Q. It's for they're afraid they of are. something. Yeah, they're you see that. <laughs> afraid Same. of well, something. Why would you ban Q if you're not afraid of it? Well, because Same. here's their here's their reasoning. Well, because they're saying shit that's that's causing people to think and do stupid shit, and it's endangering us all. Oh, so you got to shut down BLM too. 
well, they both got to go. Well, I, I, I personally agree with you where if you're going to shut one down, shut them all down. But I, if I own Twitter, I wouldn't shut anybody down. I mean that is a place to fucking have. Go. I would that is a place where people can fucking vent and t- say whatever they want. I wouldn't shut shit. I down. think, I think Jack Dorsey is going to be in trouble here soon. Well, was, dude, do you remember uh, when all the CEOs stepped down? Wasn't that a fucking yep. trip? Like, yep, what'd you, what'd you think about that? Like, dude, I still can't figure that out. Like, they knew this shit was about to go down, and they don't want to be in the position. Or are they all stepping down because apparently all these fucking shit, like these warrants, these sealed warrants, like in other words, are they all stepping down because they're all going to jail? Are they all stepping down because, you know, they knew COVID was coming? Well, so what? Why can't you be a CEO when COVID hits? I didn't know COVID know. was coming and I didn't step down and I'm fine. What, 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 why would they step down? Cause COVID's hits. You want to know what I think? What? 2017, there was a executive order that, have you seen this? The, no the administration put out that if you're connected with anything that is uh, charges human trafficking, the government will possess your assets. So from really this started a couple of years ago, but I could see an, a scenario where their boards force them to step down because you got Bob Iger who owns like a lot of shares of Disney. And you got these, you know, CEOs who a lot of times part of their compensation is, uh, you know, aging equity share packages and shoot, like if they are connected with some sort of crime and then the government starts repossessing these big companies, it's really the companies who own the news organizations that they don't want the government to own or oh, repossess. Yeah. Dude, so that you, could you, be connected if, up there. If you own social media and you own TV, right, cable, and you own mm-hmm. Hollywood, n- how else is anyone going to communicate? That's it. Okay, we so, got CIA so, in Hollywood, man. That that's complete preconditioning. Yeah. So for so so if you own everyone. Hollywood and supposedly they quote unquote they do, you own Disney, you own all the networks. The same four or five companies own them all, all of them. Now you take Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world. You take Zuckerberg, yeah. who's got billions. You take Dorsey and yeah. all these big tech companies that make billions and look at them. How come COVID hasn't hurt any of the big companies? Name a big company that's been hurt by COVID. And the answer is none. They're all small. Okay, so so how is that possible? Like, doesn't it make you just wonder? Like, how, how in the hell can you go to Home Depot Go go ahead, go to Home Depot. That's essential. Like if I don't finish this fucking second room in the house, you know, my wife's going to kill me. So it's essential yeah. I can get hammers and shit. Okay, but it's not essential to work out. It's not essential to keep your health in order. It's stupid, dude. It's clearly stupid. So then when you start thinking, okay, well, then what's going on? Well, the deep state seems to seem more and more real. Like, holy fuck, dude. And now what you're adding to the whole thing is basically, oh, yeah. They're covering up child trafficking. And again, if you guys have never heard about this, I would strongly suggest that you guys do some research because it's coming to light really quick, dude. And it's like, it's real. Obviously, it's real. If you guys don't know it's real, go watch Tim Ballard. Go Google Tim Ballard. Go lo- go go Google uh, our, O-U-R, Underground Railroad. No, um, operation underground railroad where they're out saving kids in Haiti that are literally bred and trafficked. There's, there's four year old sex slaves and, and and it makes you wonder, dude, there's people that walk in there and pay to rape a four year old. Like, dude, if, 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 if what you're saying is true, well then, well then what we're all, well, not we're all, but what people are saying there's some really, really high level people involved, like yeah. like royal family members, like freaking presidents, ex presidents, like freaking CEOs, like freaking Hollywood movie stars, like the biggest people, the the ruling class I like to call, are all involved. Now again, you know that that to me is like a little far fetched. What do you think? You think Tom Hanks and Oprah Winfrey eat baby parts? uh i don't know i haven't gone deep enough down that but what i know how to do is follow the money so you can 
you can definitely you can definitely put two and two together. You've got you've got Biden in trouble with Ukraine trying to get the AG of Ukraine fired, and then they bust a pedophile ring in Ukraine. You can put those two together and be like, mm. and now and now and now Ukraine has a criminal investigation against Biden. Against Biden, yep. yeah. You got Hunter Biden in China, and um, there's definitely like here's, I, I here's what here's what I, here's what I want to know. What's the net worth of Obama? Watch, watch. What is the net worth of Barack Obama? As of 2018, the estimated net worth of Barack Obama was about 40 million U.S. dollars. Okay, 40 million. In well, what was it before he he hit office? It's yep. probably like a million, one and a half. Well, well, sure. I mean, why was he rich? But at the end of the day, it's not 40 million. If you Google his net worth, it's like 600 million. You sit in a computer, you can Google it. Yeah, yeah. Pull it up right now. Like supposedly, it's he's worth now six hundred million dollars. Well, how the fuck does a fucking politician? How come they're all rich? Can anybody tell me why every politician up in the high levels are rich? Every ex president's rich. Everybody's rich. Well, how? This just says Obama's net worth thirty times more than when he entered the White House. Thirty. I didn't get a figure, but. 30 times more is what it said. Anyway, you know, the reason I don't do a lot of episodes about this shit, here's why. It's because it's all speculation. Now, is it happening? Are there some coincidences? Yeah, there's some pretty creepy coincidences going on. Like, like you can go look at the courthouse. It's public record that there's 150,000 sealed indictments. There's never been more than five. You know, there's 150,000 sealed indictments. CEOs are stepping down left and right or were. COVID comes in, everybody's saying wear a mask, nobody's dying. The, 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 the deaths are actually not COVID deaths. You know, hospitals are admitting mistakes. Trump just said the other day, you're going to report uh, deaths to the White House, not CDC anymore. And guess what? Florida goes, oh, oh, sorry. We've, we've been reporting flu as COVID. It's not 90,000 new cases. It's only 11,000 new cases. Like what? And then you got the, and then you got the news acting like everybody's dying and hospitals are full. I drove around my, my, my city one day, dude, there were no full hospitals. There were nurses going, nothing is going on. I saw the news show. Everybody's getting COVID testing. Everyone I went by, there was nobody empty testing. Yeah. They're all empty here. Yeah. So it's like, if you think about that, damn, whoever controls the media controls the narrative. So, so yep. the four companies back again, what a coincidence, the four companies that are all against, you know, Trump and, and normal C are, are the, own those companies. So obviously they're not going to let, let like right now, dude, how come you don't see any child trafficking shit on the news ever? Nope. I've we never, don't see that Biden's under criminal investigation. Yeah. They didn't we tell, they see, didn't televise uh, Hillary Clinton's trial. No, we don't see COVID recoveries. We only see new cases, which, by the way, I found this out, that if you go get tested and you test positive, then you go back in a month to see if you're better and you test negative, but you have antibodies in your blood. They've been adding both of those tests to the positive count. Yeah, see, so what do you believe? It's called fabricated exponential growth. Yeah, so what do you believe and why would they do it is the question. Why, what, what benefit do they have to spike the numbers? Um, control over the voting booths. Mm. Maybe, maybe you want to affect mail-in voting. Which, by yep. the way, if 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 we mail-in vote, it's it's rigged. If you see a law go in where there's no voting, it's mail-in voting, dude. Trump's over. Unless, I'm pretty of course, sure it's been we've been rigged for. A long time. Oh, it's been rigged. Trump never should have won, dude. Did you see the videos of everybody saying while he was running it's a joke, he will not win. There is no possible way. And then boom, yeah. he actually wins. Bro, and then, I'm gonna then I'm we gonna send you lowest, I'm gonna we got the lowest gonna, unemployment rate, dude, ever in fifty years. Our markets are going crazy. Our deals are being renegotiated with other countries. And one of them was China. Now you go get Trump over at China and you renegotiate a deal where we're not getting screwed and bent over like the last deals we made. And, yeah. and all of a sudden China has one clause in that agreement that says act of God will break this deal. And a, and a COVID, COVID outbreak, a pandemic is considered an act of God. So now, Oh, 
the deal Trump made is null and void. Well, you think yeah. you, you think that might have been just it, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, dude, don't waste a good fucking pandemic. Like, you know, <laughs> let's create yeah. some freaking, let's knock out all the small businesses. Bezos, Zuckerberg, they all got richer as soon as it happened. Everybody jumped online. Zoom value went through the roof. Any big Chinese tech bags. company went through the roof. Yep. Amazon, dude, the guy increased his net worth by like thirty billion in one day. I mean, deservedly so. And by the way, do you see any pictures of Bezos running around? Nope, me either. Do you see any pictures of uh, Ghislaine Maxwell? I don't. No. I and by the way, if she ends up dead, come on, dude, no way, no she way. She better wear a mask. She better get a mask, or she's gonna get COVID. All I can tell you, dude, is that chick's got some secrets, some dirty ass secrets, dude. And there's crazy yep. shit going on. Like the judge that was on the Epstein case got FedEx driver shot. And then he was found shot in the head, committed suicide. Supposedly 56 people connected to the Clintons that were friends with the Clintons have committed suicide. Nobody on earth knows 56 yep. people that committed suicide. Okay. Except for them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's like so crazy that people don't want to believe it but if you look and it's true it's like it makes you go hmm like dude is this real the Mac maxwell and michael uh flynn are big linchpins his his gag orders almost up and we should learn some new some new good goodies. well here's the way i look at it folks if this deep state has such a freaking grasp where they can frame people and they can kill people and they can control the media and they can control the narrative. You know, we're all fucked anyway. So just live your life, enjoy it while you can. Okay. Then if it's true, well then it could be that the big white hats out there are also real and you know, one side's going to win. So if the good wins, don't worry about it. Just kick back and watch the show. And then if the bad side wins, they would have won anyway. Just like if you roll into a to a to a small town and the whole police department is fucking crooked, you're fucked, dude. Yes or no? You roll into uh, a no small comment. town, dude, where the whole police department is is dirty, if that were even real scenario, and and you're just in the town and and like the police department is dirty and it's against you dude you're screwed you're not you there's no white hats coming to save you you just got to move to another place you got to get, get a, well, a new dude, town or stay out of there that's what i'm saying so like, or shit. or join them <laughs> i've said before dude if there's a side that's winning like i'd consider joining they're like that's the illuminati and i'm like well shit dude if you believe in the bible right it already says who's going to win doesn't it? Doesn't the Bible already yes, state who's going to win? It sure does. Who's going to win? Yep. The White Hats. That's right. So, good. Just enjoy the show. Keep your head down and keep making Make money. Make some money. Focus on the right. ball. Quit focusing on the headlines. I teach people one thing, dude. Look, you want to reset this thing that we've had. Dude, one thing. You only teach people one thing. Well, these recordings that people have their whole life, they don't understand that those recordings end up affecting their life. You understand? Sure. So what hap yep. what happens is you start to believe things and what you believe causes your choices and opinions and thoughts and actions. So so those are what control your results. So when people say yep. I don't like what I'm getting, which is the result, well then you have to back up. Why am I choosing and doing the things that are getting me the things I'm getting? Well, those are the choices and decisions that you're making. Now, why am I making those choices and decisions? Well, back it up. Well, th those are called your beliefs. That's your belief system. Right, So your belief system causes your choices and decisions, which causes your actions, which causes the result. So if you just keep backing it up, how do you change your beliefs? If you want to change what you're getting, change what you're doing. If you want to change what you're doing, you have to change your beliefs. And if you want to change your beliefs, what do you have to do, Taylor? Well, you just, you just told him. No, I didn't. I said, what do you have to do? And if you don't know, change say you, you don't change, know. Change, you change what you focus on. This is a problem with conspiracy not, theories not, is you can't do anything not, about it. Not so much, but that's a pretty decent answer. How you change your beliefs is you is you is you get new information. So every day, every day you wake up you, six every, six or half of twelve. No, dude, new information. New information. Like like there's information. Are you aware that there's shit you don't know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah. tomorrow you should wake up and be looking for the shit you don't know. And if you're the one talking, by the way, 
it's a real indication that it's you already know it. <laughs> so if you're doing the talking, you ain't learning shit, are you? Hit your bomb thing. Hit your bomb thing real fast. That was a bomb. That was a bomb. Yeah, so at the end of the day, you wake up every day, folks, and you look for new information. Why are you looking for new information? Because the information you have is not sufficient. It's wrong. It's in error. Some Something's wrong because it's not producing you, your, your, your end desire. So you change what you believe and you'll start changing your thoughts. Like I used to believe it was fun to party. Now I don't believe it's fun to party. Crazy enough, I got way more money now than I used to when I thought it was fun to party. Now, again, if you're right now mm-hmm. thinking, well, I think it's fun to party, go ahead. But again, that causes you to make your decisions. Like, hey, you want to go to this party on Thursday? Hell yeah. We'll get fucked up, man. It'll be a blast. Then you wake up hungover on Friday. You don't know it, but maybe if you didn't go to that party, the next day on Friday, you would have ran into somebody that made you an offer that turned out to be the fucking break you were looking for. But you chose the party. So it's like, well, now I can't party. I'm not saying that, folks. I'm saying your beliefs cause your actions because they control your choices and opinions and decisions. And if you want, and if you don't like what you're getting, that means whatever you're doing is wrong. Okay, like act. It, listen, listen. It, like action causes like result. Like if I copy what this motherfucker's doing right now, I will likely get a result like he is. Now again, it may not be as good because let's say he's better. But if you copy somebody, all reality is you'll probably get what they're getting. Like action causes like result. Here's how, here's how you say it. This is your one-liner for the show. If you don't like what you're getting, change what you're getting. Yeah. See? New information. Say, say that again. Get new information. If you don't like what you're getting, change what you're getting. <laughs> bomb. No. The bomb thing. <laughs> I control the bombs and that wasn't one. If you don't like what you're getting, change what you're getting. Basically what you said. No, it isn't. Get new information. No, I didn't. I said, if you don't like what you're getting, change what you're doing. Problem is, is you're most, getting new information. Problem is, is most people don't know how to change what they're doing, bro. That's why they're stuck. There's people stuck, bro. They don't know what you know. Like, dude, you laugh at 20 grand a month, not even leaving your crib. If you made 20 grand a month, dude, you'd start getting nervous. There's people that never If I made 20k a day, I would be nervous. Yeah, but there's but there's but there's people that don't make 20 grand a month, dude, that that if you could just show them how to get to 20 grand, let alone 20 million, dude, they're they're loving life. So you gotta ask themselves, why are they why are they not making 20 grand? Well, there's only one answer. They don't know how. (laughs) That's it. You learned how, bro. And you, and you applied it. Cause I know a lot of people, I teach a lot of things to a lot of people, but they don't do anything with it, which means learning it isn't even the key. The key is, is applying it. Like if he shut down all his ads, he could know whatever the fuck he knows. He ain't going to make no money. The reason he's making money is because he's applying what he knows. Anyway, dude, this turned out to be, I should have just done a solo episode. Cause these, so, good, man. cause these are just straight bombs, dude. I'm just, I'm just freaking, lamb, I'm lamb basting. When the teacher, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So Indeed. have you back on your show sometime. When no, dude, you're already a ready. teacher. And, and dude, I'd hire your company for my company, Lightspeed. Because, again, I don't get rich selling courses, even though I do yeah. make money selling courses. Yeah. I, get, I got rich building the software and licensing it and closing people. So I got rich closing people. You understand? That's why you want to learn how to close for me. Because, like, I closed people and made millions. Now, yeah. how, what did I close them on? Opportunity, mainly. Uh, being my friend, um, you know, common sense. I use common sense. I use what's called logic. But at the end of the day, I hear what you're saying. If you're, if, if someone got rich selling courses on sales, well then dude, you don't want to learn from that person necessarily, unless what you want to learn is how do I get rich selling courses on sales? Exactly. But if you, yep. but, but if you, but if you do want to learn that, like, how do I do what he did? And, and that you would want to learn from him. How, what, how the fuck did you get rich selling courses on sales when you've never sold anything? And he'd say, well, dude, I just pretended that I did. I just pretended that I am great. I, I told everybody I was great and enough people believed me. <laughs> right. Does that work? You think that works still? Well, no, not nowadays because you got social media and you got what's called, you know, Oh, uh, 
word of mouth. Like, dude, if, if I, if, if you were a fraud, dude, I, I'd already read, read about how you got arrested and fucking, you know, cause you, you're checking. Well, not only that, but you're on the, you're on the internet enough to where I recognized you visually, but didn't know your name, which means, which means dude, if there was a negative thing, I would have saw that too. Bro, that is an interesting point because that's exactly what I want because I can sell that. The fact you don't know my name means that my business is not tied to me. That's by design. I'll give you one there, son. But Thanks, but but the sales mentor, just so everybody knows, you know, just because it's hosted on Kajabi doesn't make it a total pile of shit. It's the content you're buying, not the experience. That's right. It's the know-how. Hey, get us on. Get us on Lightspeed. Get us on Lightspeed. Dude, we'll, trust we'll make me, the switch. Trust me. I, you're gonna get after this is over. Uh, well, let's just hang for a minute, and I'll get. I'll, we'll swap digits, and we'll talk here pretty soon. Because again, I can help you make something really badass that'll probably make you two to three times what you're making, the same way you're making it. See what I'm saying? You might yep. you might alter a few things, but that's it. And then you do the same th- shit you're doing. And dude, I'm telling you, you'll go, holy shit, I can't believe I ain't been doing this this whole time. And you'll literally start counting how much how much money you actually lost. So when people always say, Well, Kajabi's cheaper, and I'm like, so what? Like fucking what 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 what's that got to do with it? Just like, dude, if you show me how to make millions, I'll split it with you. Okay? Come show me how to make millions and I'll split it with you. Okay. I'll, sh- I'll, I'll show you how to make millions. Would you like to learn more than you're making now, bro? Doing the same I, thing you're doing, doing the same zero, thing you're doing. Put a zero on it, and I'm I'm down. I'm Done. down to clown. Done. So we'll talk after that. But I want to get people some value. We've been talking conspiracy. We've been dancing around a little bit of value. You obviously know how to sell. You obviously know how to advertise. Okay, I've seen you. You've built brand facial brand recognition. When I say recognition, it means dude, I recognize. Oh, it is that motherfucker? I see. So you, you ever heard of Alex Hormozzi, by the way? Yeah, he's a buddy. Yeah, so Alex Hormozzi, dude, brilliant dude. I love that dude. But like his big old mustache, you know, yeah. he he had a purpose for the mustache, and he knew because yeah. that would make him more recognizable. Like this yeah. shit works, bro. So tell him yeah. a little bit. Tell him a little bit, and then and then. Talk about like, you know, some things they probably should know if they're going to get in the copy game. Like give them some nuggets. It took you a little bit of money to learn. Um, I mean, you want to make sure you learn from the right mentors. You'll replicate their life. That's what was what Brad was saying earlier. Uh, There's a lot of kids who you can learn from who have gotten good at selling themselves, but they can't sell. They they can only sell themselves. They can't sell. They're better at selling you on them than they are selling products. You want to make sure you're learning from people who actually know the game. Um, the way I did it, copywriting, is I downloaded a bunch of old sales letters. Who? From 80s, 90s, early 2000s, John Carlton, uh, even new internet marketers, you know, Todd, Todd Brown and uh, Russell John Brunson. Cables, old school. Russell Brunson. Yeah. Pe- people that they might not be writing Dean, Tony these and letters Dean. themselves. But, yeah, the Graziosi, but, but it's you their can letter. grab them, you can copy them out by hand. There's a difference in copying things out by hand because you are learning the patterns of the words. This, you assemble sales copy. You don't necessarily write sales copy. You learn the eh? yeah. You learn it's it's just like it's just like a sales Listen call. Up. What do you say, the Brad? That there's a cadence to great sales calls. Sure. There's a cadence. It's recognizable. I call, I call it a rhythm, but cadence is a good word. Rhythm. So when you when you learn the the cadence of the sales message, uh, you get really good at learning how to talk like pr- influential people talk. Um, yeah. So, so do you like? Give you, yeah, but for example, I'd just rather hire your company to write my sales copy for Lightspeed. And by the way, seven hundred of my other customers that need sales copy. Maybe you would. What do you mean? No, not well, maybe. We don't do I it. would. We don't do that. We so, don't do that. So all you do is teach me to do it. Yeah. Why absolutely. wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it for people for bigger money? You could, if you want to give me equity, I'll take it. Throw me down. Throw me down Did a I, real. Have bone I said I we'll, didn't? We'll talk have, about have, it. Have I said I wouldn't? Throw me down a bone and, and we'll we'll look at it. Well, again, listen. I'm the type of dude that you've probably never met before. I got no ego. If you could come in here and do what you do, like you go, shit, dude, I just took that dude's company from, let's say, 
25 million a year to 75 million a year. And I took 10% for doing it. Would I be yeah. smart for doing it or dumb for doing it? You'd be smart. Yeah. But is that what you're doing? 25 million? Uh, a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm pacing 30, but you know, 25 on an average. From light speed, just from licensing. Just right? light, just light speed. Yep. And again, it's it's because I've never marketed, bro. You you never seen light speed ads out on the internet, have you? No, that's right. I haven't. That's right. Because I'm not doing it. But I don't write sales copy, dude. It's all Kajabi's marketing, though. Yeah, Kajabi's marketing like a motherfucker. The problem is, is dude, I'm not looking for Kajabi users. I'm not looking for fucking people that want to get ninety seven dollars for a video. Okay, Kajabi can have those. I'm looking for people that actually want to train people because with training, dude, you need four key ingredients and Kajabi doesn't allow it. Doesn't have it. So what are those ingredients? Basically you're, you're, you're selling someone a video. Hey, you want to see my video for $97? There's information in it. Good. That's, that's Kajabi can do those all day long, but I have a lot of people that have came from Kajabi and they're like, Oh shit, dude, night and day. But anyway, at the end of the day, the four ingredients that you have to have to train people is good content. Number one, right? You put the video in Kajabi, that's good content. So they got good content because you put it in there, right? Repetition. Mm -hmm. Does Kajabi, Mm -hmm. does Kajabi force and track people going through it more than once or no? No clue. It doesn't. So there's no repetition, but you need repetition. Repetition is how we learn. Okay. That's why we've said our ABCs a thousand times. Repetition is is really what you need to. It's number three. Practice. Okay. You got to actually practice what it is you're learning to do to get good at it but kajabi doesn't la- allow you to practice it's just a video to watch okay i watch mixed martial arts doesn't make me a black belt okay number four you need accountability there's no accountability you don't know if i'm logging in not logging in you don't know shit and, and, it's like quizzing well even. you got you got to have accountability built into it so again lightspeed just allows you to deliver those things with accountability with automation and notifications and all that bullshit so it's just like taking it to another level. So the way I like to say it is like Kajabi is a hosting solution and Lightspeed is a learning solution. There's two, it's two different things. Like, do you want to actually teach people? Because if you do, well then Kajabi would just give them access to the good content. Where's the repetition? Where's the practice? Where's the accountability? Not to mention where's, yeah. the, where's the interactivity? Where's the engagement? Where's the freaking intelligent design? It ain't there because Kajabi is a hosting solution. And and a little bit of a marketing solution, like it with the built-in email shit. But but again, I like Kajabi. I had the founder of Kajabi here. If you were here in my studio, you'd walk out to where all the signatures are, and you'd look up in the in the corner of the wall, and and the founder of Kajabi wrote, "Kajabi is cool, but Lightspeed's cooler." And it's true. But anyway, I'm not here to sell you Lightspeed, brother man. We'll get that another day. What I want to do is get these Bomb Squad listeners some freaking tactical shit that they only heard here that maybe it's in your course and it's a freaking, you know, one of the big zingers people don't realize and that you just give it to them. Like, find the right mentor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, That's pretty here's, good. That's pretty here's good. Why, here's I, why you're struggling to get to get tactical stuff from me. Let me just give this to you. I'm gonna, this is for you, not for your listeners. Then, you, then we can get to your <laughs> listeners. All right. I run so many things. I'm an anomaly. I'm 31 years old. I have 120 people that at some point are paid through what we do. Real estate, sales consulting. You know what Lightspeed will be awesome for is is our corporate partnerships because that's where I want accountability. So we need to talk about that. You have my hardest thing today. You know what it is, Mr. Lee, is it's so hard for me to teach unless I have a context for what specifically is going on because I'm coming off of you know, a $5.6 million bridge loan in St. Joe, which is a suburb of Kansas city, all single family. St. So Joe's in Missouri in capital arbitrage. Yeah. Same um, same St. Joe, Missouri. Yeah. I've been there. So my, I know it. my brain's in, in capital, you know, arbitrage, capital allocation, those things. So you ever eat at Barbosa? Rumi ends. Huh? You ever eat at Barbosa? I haven't. No. In St. Joe, Barbosa's look it up next time. No. there. All right. So, cool. so, so, where did that culminate to? Tell, tell me where you got to tell me exactly where to go. Okay, okay, what, okay. What you want me to teach? Light speed. Use light speed as the example. Okay. 
I'm going to start marketing. Never marketed really before. When I say never marketed before, I mean, you know, here and there, just stupid shit, going to a convention, but like real marketing, shit like you're doing, where you, where the Lightspeed yeah. brand's being seen by everybody you, all day. You want me to teach you how to market it? No, I want What you, I would do right now? Yeah, I want you to tell me something I could do right now that would help me. Here's, here, here it is. Everyone is marketing a certain way. Everyone's marketing a certain way. The message that's ultimately going to win is probably not content hosting versus teaching. Here's the message that's going to win. What are people concerned about? Concerned about a recession, COVID, crashes. I have 25 banking partners. They're all terrified about a crash. Some imminent gold prices higher than they've ever been. You're talking to business leaders. You're not talking to Kajabi customers. They're concerned about this. And what are they concerned about? One thing starts with an R, retention. Do, do your four points, well, three out of the four, lead to higher retention than Kajabi? Probably so, because they're engaged. If you're engaged, you're going you're gonna to stick around. So really, the question is not, do I go with the lower Kajabi or do I go with the more expensive teaching? The question is not, do I care about teaching or do I just want to host content? The question is this, Mr. Bradley, do you want to retain your customers through the recession longer than your competitors? Or do you want to spin out every single month having to get a brand new lineup of customers because the old customers you had, they canceled their monthly subscription? You pick. If you want retention, I want to retain. Lightspeed. Then Lightspeed is the retention tool that the best of the best use, not only to transfer information, but to hang on to the relationship that you spend money to acquire. That's it. Mm, that's a good one. There is a good That's one. dirty. I didn't even get a bomb for that one, but that is dirty right there well again it, it, I, here's what i believe tell me tell me if i'm flawed in my thinking i believe that the people buy the result so what do people want right now i don't want to retain any customers i don't want to lose any money same thing those are oxymorons yeah six, right? six of one half a dozen yeah. of the other but my point is is it's not even the retention of customers. It's I don't want to go broke. I want to freaking keep all the money and I want to actually raise money. So there my, you go. So but my, the mechanism. So, so my question for the, you would be, Taylor, does a trained employee outperform an un, untrained employee? Yes. So you need to train your employees, correct? Absolutely. How are you doing that? Oh, I'm using Kajabi. Kajabi's not necessarily training, though. It's exposing, but training or, requires or these four staff. Things. Yeah. It's even worse. Yeah. So so what would make would you split test those two? Yeah, I was split test everything. Yeah, because like cause like dude, you what you did is you made an angle and the angle was retention. It might work awesome. I made an angle which is make more money. You know, how do you make more money? That's the result people want. Well, you gotta train your people. So if I went out with the money one and you went out with the retention one, one would win, yes or no. Here's but this is where one would win, but probably what you would find is that they would they would just attract different caliber of customers. And so you would not only split test them on the front, but split test them through. Because what if the retention angle, let's just throw an example out. What if the retention angle worked better and it got you cheaper customers, but your angle kept those customers longer, so much longer that the lifetime cost is better with yours, even though the front loaded cost is better with mine. Well, then you would go with yours because long term it'd be better. Just yours like, is just, better. Your no, long term is better. Well, whichever one you just said would be the long term. Because again, at the end of the day, it's which one did what? Well, this one took four years to yeah, make a million. This one made me more money over the course of time. Um, in terms of the angle, one of the things that they teach in copywriting is mechanization. How do you take somebody from the top who doesn't understand to the bottom of a sales letter where they have no more objections they understand? Have you ever heard of mechanization? I haven't heard it said that way, but I hear what you're saying. Uh, Breakthrough Advertising, Eugene Schwartz, written a long time ago, talked it, talked about mechanization. Retention is really a mechanism. We call them angles today, but retention is a mechanism that shows somebody how what you're promising is not only possible, but plausible with whatever it is that you're selling. So really what we have to come down to is which mechanize, which, which, which mechanization or which mechanism does a better job at getting somebody to, first of all, try it, and second of all, stick with it. And you just got to test that through all the way. 
12 months, 18 months, 24 months. See, there's some tactical shit, peeps. And if you didn't understand what he said, you might as well not even try. You should go to Sales Mentor. Go to trafficandfunnels.com forward slash podcast. Start listening to his daily mind medicine. Follow him at Taylor Welch. Is it Taylor A. Welch? Shit, I need readers nowadays. Come Taylor. On. Taylor A. Welch. That's Damn, it. Dude. And then if the salesmentor.com slash reflex is a great two or three hour training. For free. On for free. There you on, go. Uh, on our style. There you yep. go. Salesmentor.com forward slash forward slash reflex. And dude. I can tell you just by talking to you that, that, dude, you've been successful. You know what you're doing. You're quite confident, and usually confidence comes from one thing. You know what it is? I don't. Winning. There we go. Winning. Dude, I answered something wrong earlier, so see, I learned see, too. Now you're, like, I'm now not you're careful. Answer this. But, dude, winning, <laughs> winning, winning. Confidence is a memory of winning. The reason why people are confident is because they've won so many times before, usually. So again, I'm not talking about false confidence, ego, or bravado. I'm talking about true, right. real confidence. Like if, I, if I've if i done something a million times, dude, I, I have an air of confidence about that particular thing. That's why you got a you know, black belt in jujitsu, MMA champion. They're pretty confident standing around a bunch of dudes that you know think they're tough. They're pretty confident. Yep. You you hang around yep. a chess player that's like world champion chess player, and, and he's just at a normal party, and someone challenges him to chess. He's pretty he's pretty confident, right? But that's because, yep. dude, you've already made millions of dollars implementing what it is you're teaching people to do. Is that a fair statement? It's a fact. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what he just said, because what you just said was tactical shit. That's what I've been. That's what I wanted to touch on. It's it's it's, it's shit you can actually apply. If you can't understand what he said, well, then I wouldn't even try to learn how to do it on this podcast because I don't even think you can. How many hours is all your content? If someone really mastered it, how many hours would they be putting in? In the sales side? No, not sales uh, side. Sales side's fairly easy. I mean, dude, it ain't that hard to teach people sales, okay? It's way harder to teach people copy and marketing and Facebook media buying. I mean, how do you retarget somebody? How do you know to manage a cognitive bias and throw in a pre-frame into a piece of content that isn't an ad, which is much cheaper go. to deliver? So you deliver it and you basically essentially warm up a cold audience. You never throw an ad at a cold audience in your whole life. Now, how do you know this shit? Well, he, yeah. you Couple know, thousand hours. Yeah, you know it because you fucking did it the hard way too, didn't you? Yeah, couple so, thousand hours. Yeah. Well, folks, if it's forty hours a week and you got to put in a couple hundred or a couple thousand, that's like how many years? Ten. Uh, yeah. See, so. Well. No, nah, three. Three years, folks. Three years, and you can make million. And people tell me, especially younger, twenty-one year olds, they're following me. They DM me, dude. I'm just getting out of college. What do you think I should do? Every time I say, learn copywriting and how to market. Like, dude, yeah. you you don't have to work for anybody. That's why you said, yeah, I'll come help you if you give me equity. Because, dude, you're beyond working for people. You don't need a damn person, do you? Because you know how to market. Yep. And your team doesn't even need to know, even though they learned by working with you, because you did, and y'all freaking grew. Now it's like, dude, you're on freaking autopilot, dude. Thirty-one years old, living. Are you married? Married with the baby. Oh, One year old, three months old. See, that's, One year, three months. That's a good thing in my book. But if I was, you know, younger, I would have said, "Oh, sorry." Yeah. I'd have said, "Dude, making, pre, pre yeah, but make <laughs> making millions, success, making millions." At a young age, being single, a lot of people would say is better than being married with a kid. But I personally don't. I think, and you will, I'm sure, agree, even if you don't currently, that that is the better way. I agree. But our, our top, our sales director here, he probably does half a million a year, and he's got real estate from a real estate company. He's, he's a millionaire. He's 26. Single? Insane. Single. Yeah. See, so running around loving life, Amy. He right now, yep. well, not because of COVID, but right now, if he wanted to, he could just go hang in Greece and make money. Easy. Yep. See, that's what you'd be learning, folks, and that's what I'm. That's what I don't understand. Like after talking to you this hour, I don't know. Am I supposed to call you to learn what, how to market, or or pay you to market for me? 
That that's the problem with having the companies that we have is you got to dial into one. Sales mentor is you learn how to sell. Okay, I already traffic know how to sell. Is, traffic and funnels is you you learn how to market. And are those videos? By the way, it's actually it's it's a team. So we, it's it's a consultancy slash agency. So a little bit of it is done for you. All right. Well, but eighty percent of it is consulting. Well, I'll make you a deal. I'll, again, we'll exchange numbers, but I'll make you a deal because I got like at least a couple hundred candidates that would all buy whatever package you have at Traffic and Funnels. Why? Well, because they sell content and they sell speaking and they sell expertise and and their biggest challenge, they've got a VT system. They they're not on Kajabi. They're on a freaking badass system. The problem they have though if I were to help them would be, how do I sell more? Well, you sell more by learning the shit this dude's teaching. You sell more yeah. by writing good copy. You sell more by learning how to freaking retarget and freaking buy media and freaking basically inundate the space as the fucking leader. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So, True. so, so boil that down to a bumper sticker. You know what it's basically saying? Dude, I have hundreds of customers for you that, that, that aren't even listening to this show. There's probably, you're going to get a whole bunch just from the bomb squad. Always, people always do. You know why? Because the bomb squad, squad ain't dumb. They, they're, they're listening going, dude, this Taylor knows his shit. When it comes to marketing, you know your shit. That's for damn sure. Does, you know, house decorating? Not so much. Nope. <laughs> nothing. Got nothing there, bro. Can't help you there. Dude, you ever get out to Vegas? Uh, I only went one time. It was with uh, Roland and the boys from Roland Frazier. What room? Yeah, yeah, dude. Then another uh, smart dude right there. Smart, yeah. Yep, we're using his stuff to uh, buy businesses right now. It's a great time to buy businesses too, dude. So you're just a freaking executor, man. You're you're probably having a blast, aren't you? Oh, this is the game, bro. I just wake up, put my shoes on, and play the game. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's fun though, isn't it? It is fun. You enjoying zero. Your life? Serial entrepreneur is a uh, um, textbook. Well, dude, Jeez, I don't even know what I'm working on. I'm just working on it all. So, folks, pay attention. Okay. Subscribe to his Daily Mind Medicine podcast. Okay. Traffic and funnels, I would get a hold of, right? Personally, and I'm going to, we're going to talk offline. If you guys want to learn how to freaking basically market, and there's a free offer there, you just go to traffic and funnels forward slash free offer. Yep. And, then, and then and then if you want to learn to sell, which, by the way, anyone in the world needs to learn how to sell. Because if you market and get your phones ringing off the hook, can't close anything, you're screwed. So then you would go yep. basically to the salesmentor.com forward slash reflex and yep. freaking and get then, yourself a free, if it, some free knowledge. That's an actual course. Free course. And then if you want to break into real estate, I've, I've bought around about $3 million in real estate this month. July 22nd. By the time we get to the end of the year, I'll be over $6 million a month in real estate acquisitions. Wealthcapholdings.com slash free book. You can throw that one on the list too. These are people, you're making some money. Maybe you're, you're doing a couple six figures. Maybe you're all the way up into seven figures. Maybe you're crazy and doing eight figures and you want to store. Gold prices are higher than, almost higher than they've ever been. Silver is almost higher than it's ever been. The dollar is not safe right now. You look at China, South China Sea, you look at the tensions. Russia's buying more gold than they've ever bought ever. A lot of powerful people are predicting that the dollar might not be as valuable six months from now as it is now. You need to get your money into a little bit of real estate. So we don't do that whole syndication thing. You buy actual properties that you own. Mm. So that's through Wealth Cap Holdings. It's pretty good. Folks, you better be you better be sharing this podcast out. There's a lot of people might might literally say this episode changed their life taylor appreciate you appreciate you coming on appreciate you taking the time to drop knowledge and uh be on my show you got it bro now Let's folks now don't hang up folks make sure you share this out somebody might need it Till next time keep it real mm -hmm.